Oh no, I am out of popcorn again. Yes. Let's make some more. I love eating popcorn while watching something. However, I am quite lazy to make it, especially if it finishes in the middle of a movie or TV series. I search on the internet for a popcorn maker, which I can control with my phone, so I can just continue watching the TV, but I couldn't find one. Then I decided to make one for myself. According to the Wikipedia, when a corn kernel is heated up, it expands and poops off. It needs around 180 degrees Celsius to poop a corn kernel. Basically I only need two things. First one is a heating source which goes at least up to 180 degrees Celsius and second one is a way to distribute the heat to prevent it from burning. Then I got in my car and visited a local store to see if they have something useful for me. I went directly to the lane where heating kitchen appliances are placed in the store. But I couldn't find anything which fits any of my ideas. When I decided to leave, I found something in a really unrelated part of the store. This is a cheap Chinese hair dryer. It was close to 6 euros, which was not that expensive. After opening the box, I removed the screws to see what's inside. By paying 6 bucks, you get a heat reflector paper and a heating element and a capacitor, a diode and of course a switch. On the heating element, there is an overheat circuit breaker. Heat breaker prevents temperature to go beyond a certain level for protecting your head from frying. I bypassed this with a cable. I designed a part to make a prototype for testing the heater. I left the bottom part empty because most of the corn kernels have small particles in it and I wanted them to fall under the popcorn machine. For the air, instead of getting it from the bottom, I left air pockets from the sides of the mounting slot for the heating element. And I left the slot for the mains cable. And for the main switch, I left another slot. I include the supports in the model itself, so if you want to print it, there is no need for any other support. Then it was time to print it. I left it over for a night. Finished result was not looking half bad. You can easily remove the sacrificial support with a knife or with a screwdriver. Then I installed the heating element to the bottom part. And then heat reflector paper on the top of that. I have got a can and tied up a metal grid which came with the hair dryer using some cables. And then I placed it right on the heating element. I made the first test with these. First I just used two spoons of shells to see if it actually works. I start the hair dryer as it is without any controller. And it started popping after a minute. As you see, it created a quite a mess. However, it proves that the concept was working. So, I am happy with that. Some of the kernels did not pop up properly because they were staying close to the walls of the can. So it is a really nice detail to know before designing the upper part of the popcorn maker. While I was doing the test, I also took some temperature measurements. I strongly recommend you to do the same. I installed every part as I shown previously. I basically put some small kernels on the can. Motor starts working right away and the temperature of the resistor goes high right away. When the temperature on the kernels reaches around 180 degrees Celsius, you start seeing the first pops. Temperature on the heat reflector wall never goes beyond 70 degrees Celsius, which is the most critical temperature, because it would mean that upper part of the popcorn machine can't touch it. Kernels closer to the wall of the can never pops up. Instead, they burn. So, it is critical not to introduce any air blocking spots. So, metal grids shouldn't touch any plastic part because it goes around 180 degrees Celsius and it will definitely melt the plastic. Temperature near to the heat reflected paper reaches close to the glass transition temperatures. If you want to touch it, 
you need a way to cool the plastic down. I came up with a rather unique design to solve this issue. I designed cold air channels inside of the upper part. Most critical location is here. My plan is to let the motor to suck the air from the sides of the upper part and cool the upper part by this way. It's impossible to manufacture this using traditional methods. But with a 3D printer, it's not an issue at all. Then I waited another night for my 3D printer to finish the job. Unfortunately, during the sprint, the belt from the hot end broke off. So in the morning, I found this spaghetti monster. Hmm. Looks perfect. I put the belt onto the hot end before starting my second attempt. This time 3D printing went quite smoothly. I now have the main parts for my popcorn machine and it is ready to try. First of all I wanted to have a virus control capability. For the brain of this project I will use an old MCE module which is an ESP8266 board and to control the heating element I will use a relay and to check the temperature I am going to use an NTC100K thermistor. I was first thinking about using a solid state relay, but it was not necessary. Burning temperature for a corn kernel is around 220 degrees and it never went above that during my experiments. To get a 5V DC, I used one of the old phone chargers. Cables on it were quite damaged, but the circuit should just work fine. I soldered all the parts according to the circuit diagram that I made. By the way, you can find all the related files in the description. I shared the circuit diagram, Arduino code and all 3D files. Before uploading the code, you should first install the smooth thermistor library from the library manager. And then just click the upload button and it will compile the code and send it to the node MCU. And to see the IP address, just click the serial monitor and copy the IP address. After that you can open your browser and type the IP address you just copied. And you can just control your popcorn maker either from your PC or from your mobile phone. Now it's time for a real test. In this test, kernels popped up mostly ok, but there were too many burnt ones. I guess the air wasn't distributing the heat properly, but nevertheless, it was tasty. I changed the airflow settings from the switch and retried the experiment. This time, the result was much better. They popped up quite fine compared to first try. There were only a few unpopped kernels and most importantly there were no burnt ones. To finish the project I designed and printed a suitable cup for the popcorn maker. And now it was time to make the final test. This time I put 4 spoons of corn kernels. And using my phone, I started it.
I like making it ready for the next patch. Who knows? I might want to eat more during the movie, right? I should warn you though, if you make the popcorn maker yourself, you might make a lot more than necessary for your whole family. But I guess it's safe to say that I won't run out of popcorn again in the middle of a movie or TV series. Freshly made popcorn will be available for me anytime I desire popcorn. See you next time.